this week we've decided to review an oldie, but a goodie. Well, I guess not really that old. Oh, well, in yeah, relation yeah. to how long film has been around. <laughs> well, obviously, if you're going the 1999 that, super 1999. hit being John Malkovich. Right, super hit. Was it? Well, you know, it's one of those movies that you don't really see coming. I guess so, yeah. Would you think that a movie about John Cusack tunneling into John Malkovich's brain and being able to control him for 15 minutes would make more than $100 million at the worldwide box office? I would not. And yet? <laughs> in fact, I remember seeing the trailer for this movie ages ago. Yeah. And just, huh, was my reaction. Yeah? Did you think you wouldn't like it? I didn't, I, not necessarily. I thought it would be really weird and really strange and right. really underground and it would be this one-off thing that no one would ever talk about again. Right, like one of those Movie Central movies that's yeah. like, check this snow yeah, falling like, on cedars like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like this silly little like movie. It's like, oh, you go, in, go inside that actor's brain. Parts and then, of it are in black and white for some whoops. reason. There's and, no black and white in this no. movie, but you know what but I mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, so so I definitely definitely didn't think it would be a big hit or anything like that. But uh, and I, I mean I, I guess at the time it, I mean, it wasn't a big hit or anything, but it definitely set the stage for a lot of uh, uh, continuing careers for a lot of people involved. And um, I think it it definitely made John Malkovich a more recognizable name. Um, not yeah. that like he wasn't before per se, but he definitely was more of a character actor that he had his he had his Oscar by his yeah. Oscar nomination right, right. I should say by then because um, he was he he got an Oscar nomination for In the Line of Fire with Clint okay. Eastwood yep. and um, that was like his big movie I think mm -hmm. that was what he was most known for he was also in like The Man in the Iron Mask that was oh right. That was a that that movie's a turd, but yeah, um, it had a lot of big actors. In it. Yeah, it had a lot yeah. of big actors in it, um, and he did a whole bunch of stuff prior mm -hmm. to that. But you're right, he was more of a character actor, mm -hmm. a guy who would who you would call on if you needed someone to play a psychopath. Yes, absolutely. He also did Con Air. That's right. Yeah, that was the one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> Now we can Great. start. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. Malkovich, Malkovich. 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 The bit is over. Malkovich. Right. The bit's done. We could have kept going. It died. We could have got some more nuances it. from it. No. Yeah, I know. He, he would yeah. he'd kill all my dreams. Before we get into like the uh, plot and the uh, groundwork mm -hmm. of this whole movie, yes. um, I would like to say... Um, Tomorrow, as of the filming of this episode, is uh, the uh, Canada-United States game That's right. in the Sochi Olympics. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know if you're a betting man. Not often, but go on. But um, if, uh, if Canada doesn't win tomorrow, uh -huh. I am willing to uh, seed something embarrassing that you can have me do on the show. Oh, good. If you will be willing to see that if they if, do win. If they do win. Yeah. But I don't want... I, I want Canada to win. It's fun having something else, though, going on. I'm but just, I also don't get to watch it live, so it's like not as... You can say no, and I'll just fun. cut this whole thing out. I feel, I feel like you should do that bet with someone else, perhaps. No one would take it. People, The people who I would do it with are people who like hockey. Right, who, yes. who follow hockey, who adore hockey, mm -hmm. and um, they would never bet against Canada. Right. You, on the other hand, well, I still wouldn't. But... Think <laughs> hockey is played on like uh, court. Uh, I know there's a lot of and goals oh. are touchdowns to you. No, I believe they're called nets. You think the Vancouver oh. Canucks are called the Van Chucks? <laughs> and you think a team is called the Squadron? Well, so, I mean, I'm just you saying... can call them whatever you want. Uh, I don't think there's any rules. I'm just saying if you want to, <laughs> just to uh, make it a little bit more interesting for you. But it won't be, the problem is, I would definitely take it if I could watch the game live. If I'm not watching it live, it's not really interesting. It's just like, I'll find out later, oh, I lost, or oh, I won. Right. You know, it's not exciting if you can't actually witness it happening. Right, but you work in like a... No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my stage management thing. Oh, so you're doing stage management. Yeah, if I, worked at, if I was at work, work tomorrow, yeah. then I could watch it live at yeah. work. And maybe be pissed off when people call and I have to pause it. Well, you Why are you what calling? What tickets do you want? Fuck you, it's game. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, then. You don't want to. That's fine. 
I'll just cut this whole thing yeah, out, right? As well, if it didn't happen. I'm not going to feel bad, but... Yeah, you should. I, I, I put myself out there for you. If it was a you. different situation, I would have. Alright. Alright. Also, I'm not Kyle Collins. I can't think of embarrassing things for you to do. If, if That's I why you call him. <laughs> That's fair. Right? <laughs> Kyle, give me something to make Greg do. Right. So... We should do, we should do like an Oscar bet. Ooh, I like that. Because um, that's something we'll be watching together. Let's rewind. Something. Let's rewind. Okay. Um, so at the recording of this uh, episode, um, the Winter Olympics are still going on, and neither of us know anything about sports. So we're not going to make a bet about that. But directly after the Winter Olympics are over, the Oscars come out. And we do know things about film. Yes, we do. I or at think. least we pretend to. Well, we act like it. Yes. Because we this know is, things are, there's about... There's no DVDs in here. No. This is all prop. Yeah, this is actually uh, it's a facade. Yes. It's actually just 17, 1,700 copies of uh, uh, Armageddon. It's my favorite film. I want a lot of copies of it. Okie dokie. Don't want to close. Stop. Okay. We're working on something here. Take this up. is good. So, right. um, my idea is um, the best picture race. Yes. All right. So we'll make um, a friendly wager. A friendly about, wager. About uh, the best picture, uh, who we think will win best picture. Yes. Now, should we have kind of a, a ranked uh, system, or just you choose one film, and if you, because I mean, if neither of us pick the right film, what happens then? Then we both we lose. Both lose. <laughs> both have yeah. to do our, our we both lose things. Right. Um, so. Uh, I say we get to each pick two films. Okay. Okay. Like that. Yes. So can I? Can it be? I mean, you don't have to do this, but for me, it's going to be what I want to win and what I think will win. All right, that's the way a loser plays. Go for it. <laughs> Make loser? your picks, right. coward. Okay. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, I think American Hustle is going to win. Okay. I don't want it to. Okay. Because I don't think it deserves it. But that's the way the buzz is going, and like Argo last year, I feel like it might come true. Right. Um, what I would love to see win is her, mm -hmm. because that was definitely my favorite film of the year, and I think it deserves it, and I think it should win. This is actually very interesting. Uh -oh. Those were neither of my picks. Uh -oh. uh, what I want to win is her. Uh -oh. You and I both agree with that. Okay, good. I think it's so great. <laughs> but... Um, my picks would be 12 Years a Slave. Okay. I think it's got enough momentum behind it right, right now. Right. It won the BAFTA. It mm -hmm. won the Golden Globe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you just sunk yourself. Um, <laughs> Good. And my other one, I think The Wolf of Wall Street could pull an upset. Right. Interesting. Locked in. Being John Malkovich. Seven and a half, right? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Welcome to the seven and a half floor of the Merton Plummer building. My name is Craig Schwartz and I have an interview with Dr. Lester. Please have a seat, Mr. Juarez. My name is Schwartz. My name is Schwartz. Which of these two letters comes first, this one or this one? The symbol on the left is not a letter, sir. Damn, you're good. Nominated for several Academy Awards in the year it was released, including Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Supporting Actress. Catherine Cam Keener. Marin Diaz. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Very wrong. It's supposed to start with a C-A, though. Yep. Okay. So, what's the plot of this movie, Alan? You love it. Well, I do love this you movie. You have two uh, copies of it. I do have two copies. One regular, one Criterion edition. Um, you're just bragging. It's actually the first Criterion movie I own, and it was a gift. Whatever. So anyway, um, this movie is about a hapless uh, puppeteer uh, named Craig Schwartz, played by John Cusack who is not very successful, as puppeteering is not the best uh, source of income. But he's very good at it. He's very good at it, and that's very clearly defined um, in the first opening acts of the film. Um, and he starts his job at this uh, uh, filing place. Um, I don't actually know if they ever stipulate what the place actually does. No, they don't. Yeah, which it's is great. Just a filing place. It's just place. a place where he's a file clerk, and yeah. he it's a very weird place, and he one day happens to stumble upon this door that uh, he crawls through and finds out it's a portal into John Malkovich's brain. So essentially what happens is you go in this tunnel and you get sent into John Malkovich uh, and witness everything he witnesses, feel everything he feels for 15 minutes, and he gets spat out onto the New Jersey Turnpike. 
That's probably my favorite part. Yes. <laughs> so he tells this to the uh, love interest, Catherine Keener, um, and they decide to start a business of sorts by charging people to get to experience John Malkovich for 15 minutes. And it's dovetails from there into a whole mess of things about identity and um, uh, sexual identity and uh, what it means to have a soul. Yeah, what it, what, it, what, what it means to be you and all that kind of thing. Uh, the nature of art, the nature of uh, celebrity, a whole bunch of stuff that's really interesting and really fascinating. And Things that Kaufman will explore a lot more in Synecdoche. Yes, well, all his films. Yeah, yeah. I think mostly with the nature of art in, in Synecdoche. Synecdoche. Absolutely. Well, adaptation as well. I mean, that's all about the writing process. And that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's it, you know you you watch this movie and you see the seeds yeah, of definitely. Kaufman's uh, oeuvre, as it were. Yeah. Um, the and, only one that doesn't actually get uh, pinched off in that one is um, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Right, and you know that's. Uh, that's one that a lot of people don't associate with Kaufman as much, uh, because Clooney directed it, so it's more people see it more of a Clooney movie than a Kaufman movie. Oh, but it's Kaufman. Oh, it's absolutely Kaufman. Sam and Rockwell is a, like, Chuck Barris is a Chuck pure Barris. Kaufman character. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. He's completely unlikable, yet you want to <laughs> stick with him for the whole way. Yeah. Um, which yeah, you makes look at any of the lead characters of Kaufman work, works, and you see Kaufman the person yeah. in them all the time. Like, yeah. It's very interesting. Like the most, of course, is adaptation. Of course, where he's yeah. himself and Donald. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that the only time a fictional character has been nominated for a screenplay award? As far as I'm aware, yes. Yeah. Which I love. So weird. Yeah. It's so great. <laughs> um, and uh, the, I think the the one where you see it, where where he's the least in it mm -hmm. is Eternal Sunshine. It, like you really you, you think so? Joel? I I feel like he's the most like he. I feel like Joel is a very sympathetic character, very mm -hmm. likable, um, whereas uh, Charlie Kaufman is not. Mm -hmm. um, John Cusack, uh, Craig Schwartz is not. Mm -hmm. um, Caden Cotard is not. Um, they're very self-involved and like like this sort of thing. Um, but I don't know if it's just the way Jim Carrey plays him. Yeah, maybe. I mean, and, and maybe just because I have really delved into Charlie Kaufman's psyche as much as I can not knowing him at all. You've watched Eternal Sunshine more than anyone I know. Yeah, uh, I think that there's a lot of Kaufman in there, in, in but Eternal Sunshine specifically, whereas like, um, Adaptation, uh, Being John Malkovich, and even, and obviously Synecdoche are really about uh, work and art. Uh, Eternal Sunshine is all about relationships, and you see the, the seeds of that in all his other films as well. But Eternal Sunshine is full blown about like what he thinks about love and what he thinks about relationships and. But it's not just him though. No, it's him and two other guys. What? Because yeah, he came up with the with the story with oh, Michelle Gondry and another person. Okay. And they shared the the Academy Award, so it must have been more than just. A... He was the only one up there when he accepted. No. Yeah, they they all three of them got the Academy Award. But he was the only one up there that accepted it. I watched that speech many times. Have you? They all three got it. I believe you. I'm just yeah. saying it's weird that they wouldn't all go up with him, but maybe no. they were just like, yeah, it's... If I'm wrong, I'm going to look it up and put it in over top of and this. Overlay it, and yeah. Greg was wrong, yeah. as you do with me all the time. Yep. <laughs> My comeuppance will be swift. All right, well, again, I, I have no idea if, if other people wrote it. I was under the impression it was all, all his screenplay. But... I know the story is by two other people, but he is the sole screenplay credit. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's probably where I'm confused, though. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, no, I think that there's a, there's a lot to say about uh, the way he thinks about love and how he kind of like has this really, really low view of himself in terms of relationships and that kind of thing, which is clear in all his other films as well. Craig Schwartz, Charlie Kaufman in Adaptation, yeah. and Kim Cotard. Um, but yeah, so that's a lot of things to talk about right off the bat. Yeah, it <laughs> is a lot of things. Let's jump right into this thing, in, yeah. I think. Um, and, uh, like, what was it, general thoughts? Yeah, general thoughts. Okay. Movie. What general you thoughts. Uh, first time I saw this movie, did not like it. Okay. I did not like it. Um, maybe it's because, once again, I was just too young. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. just too young to see it, and um, I, I watched it, I was like, oh, this is neat, then it kind of got weird. And then it got weirder. Mm -hmm. Right? I liked the idea of them jumping into John Malkovich's brain, but then I was just like, no... Second it's time... Like I, I introduced the sci-fi yeah, element. Yeah. I, it, it lost me as soon as they were like... 
he's a vessel. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Um, I was like, oh, poor John Malkovich. <laughs> um, second time I watched it, I still felt the same way, where it was like, oh, poor John Malkovich, uh, because I felt really bad for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I loved it the second time. I thought it was, I thought it was and is one of the most original movies mm -hmm. I have ever seen, like, in my life. Because mm -hmm. it's not based on anything. It's just this 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 thing that fell out of Charlie Kaufman's head. Yeah. Well, apparently originally he just the the initial seed of the idea was just a dude falls in love with a woman who is not his wife. That's it. And then he introduced the portal. <laughs> he introduced, and uh, I think I read that it was always John Malkovich was always yeah. the actor. Yeah. And the studio actually told, like asked him, uh, why can't it be being Tom Cruise? And. He's like, that's no, that's not funny. That's yeah, exactly. It's not funny. It's so much more funny to be this like respected character actor who's like just like getting who's not controlled super and, famous, yeah, but is famous, famous enough. enough yeah. Do you know that I don't even know your name or where you work? And fifty other lines to get into a girl's hands. <laughs> yeah. So, honey, have you thought any more about us having a baby? I think that maybe we should just wait and see if this job thing pays off. There's a tiny door in my office, Maxine, and it takes you inside John Malkovich. Um, <laughs> so I, I found, I found the movie. It's really, it's. I think it's a movie that you gotta watch three times, because mm. the time that I watched it when we were reviewing it for this episode is the third time I watched it, mm. and it's the that's the best I ever had. Like it's the best time I ever had watching yeah. that movie. I'd say um, for all of Kaufman's movies, but at least three times. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I went through my um, my second viewing of Synecdoche, New York, uh, right afterwards. Oh boy! And I just wanted to kill myself. <laughs> um, yeah, that's dangerous. Yeah, don't don't Kaufman alone. That's a that's a rule that I'm instilling. Yeah. If you ever want to watch movies, especially that movie, especially maybe once, but twice in a row, mm. it's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, so. So I, I think I've barely penetrated the first layer of Synecdoche in New York. It's just ridiculous. Um, we'll have to we'll have to talk about that in yeah. like our final episode when we just decide <laughs> to stop doing this. Uh, when we die, yeah, um, we'll be on our deathbeds talking about Synecdoche. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but as far as like being John Malkovich goes, it's so funny. I know that was one of the biggest things that I realized when watching this time because I've watched it. Quite a few times, but you know, it came out in '99. Uh, that's what 24 years ago, math. 25 years ago. Um, what? It came out in '99. 15 years ago. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know where I am. <laughs> what year is it? I've been watching a lot of Lost. Um, the year is 2024. <laughs> You've been asleep since 2014. Uh, um, sorry, anyway, 15 years, so, you know, I've had many opportunities to watch it over the years, and I actually haven't watched it in probably a good two or three years, mm -hmm. so this is the first time I've watched it in quite, a, quite some time, and that was the first thing I realized, is like, this is hilarious. Yeah. Like, especially the beginning stuff with the, the seven and a half floor or whatever. Yeah, so funny. It's so funny. And the little in, in, uh, video, the little, like, educational orientation so video. Funny. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny. Like, absurd. how did they come up, like, this guy? They have like, oh, and this like lady comes in and she's like, I'm not a, I'm not a child, but but a, a regular adult <laughs> female or something. I can't remember her words, but it's so it's, funny. It's really funny. Yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna make you my wife. <laughs> Just apropos of nothing. Oh my god. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so very funny movie. Um, and uh, all the stuff with Malkovich is so funny. Uh, he's so good. Man. He's so good. I love the idea of uh, him. <laughs> To, uh, becoming a puppeteer and making like Sean Penn <laughs> talking about how probably wants to become a puppeteer yeah, now. But he's like, I can't do it right away because it looks like I'm just copying him. But, yeah. But I mean, I think once we all realize what our true calling is, you know, trying to make it play off like, yeah, I totally always want to be a puppeteer also. But and oh, it's so uh, the, my one of my favorite things in the whole movie is the it's showing the like newspaper things of him re uh, retiring from acting. And just the one, it's him, and it says, I will act no more forever. And it's the weirdest way, weirdest wording for it, but it's so funny. It's like, I will act no more forever. Could you, could you imagine, 
Like it's the I think it's a it's a really well layered joke because mm -hmm. it's like the wording's funny in itself, yeah. but then it's also a quote. Yeah. So he said it. Picture John Malkovich saying it. Yeah. But but it's John Malkovich doing an impression of John Cusack, <laughs> who's playing the character of Craig Schwartz, who is embodying John Malkovich. It's way up. It's right up its ass. Oh my god! Um, it's like Inception. But if you but if you picture that, it's like because he's doing Craig Schwartz is doing an impression of John Malkovich. Yes. Right. Yeah. But John Malkovich, the actor, is doing an impression of John Cusack. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's like I will act no more. Forever. Forever. <laughs> the forever is completely unnecessary. I know. <laughs> That's why I love it. It's like. It's it's almost like he's he's specifically saying it because he wants to make sure everyone understands. Yeah. No, I'm gonna puppeteer forever now. Like it's not I'm I lack no more and then I might j try again. No, I lack no more forever. Yeah. Like very it's complete, very clear. Completely redundant line. Yes. It's yes. great, but I love it. It's yeah. so great. <laughs> um, just the, the the very concept of uh, him being a puppeteer and being able to control someone's mind is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that should lead us into spoilers now. Oh. Yeah. Right. Spoilers. He, oh, yeah. he acts no more forever. Yeah. Spoilers now. So, <laughs> as soon as... There's just something I want to say um, oh. about Cameron Diaz. Okay. Um, they try their best to make her look like a troll uh -huh. in this movie. Yeah. And they fail. Fair enough. She is... She's. I mean, she's a very beautiful person. She's so beautiful. And that's the thing with these with movies like this, yeah, um, where they have these Hollywood gorgeous yeah. actors. Like she's not even wearing makeup; mm -hmm. her hair is all frazzled. Yeah. And like when she goes she wears frumpy clothes, yeah, she wears frumpy clothes. And when she goes to that guy's house, to the old man's house in the mm -hmm. rain, and her and she's soaked, and I'm like, oh my god, marry me. <laughs> it's amazing. It's all it takes, eh? Yeah, it's um, I'm really yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm easy. Um, <laughs> But what I wanted to what I wanted to bring up is I watched a, uh, a movie that was uh, made a few years before mm -hmm. uh, that, and you'll think this is the weirdest connection ever when I say it. I watched The Devil's Advocate last night. Okay. Yeah. Um, not last night. The night before. Yeah, um, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Take two. I watched The Devil's Advocate, uh -huh. and Charlize Theron yes. is in that movie, and she very slowly loses her mind. Right. right? And she barely, very slowly is supposed to look crazy and uh -huh. insane. And she does, oh. but she's also supposed to look like she's falling apart. Right. But she's still beautiful. But she's so gorgeous. And Keanu Reeves in the movie is supposed to like have the hots for this other woman, mm -hmm. uh, played by Connie Nielsen. And Connie Nielsen's a beautiful actress. That's great. But Charlize Theron is like... A goddess. It's does. it's it's insane. Like, why would you even look at any other woman when you have <laughs> this one? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe he saw a monster. Maybe. <laughs> um, so anyway, they had her up pretty these, good. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. So anyway, these these Hollywood beauties that they. I'm just trying to say. It's a tough thing. To it's do. a really tough thing to do. Yeah. Um, but, but, they, I, but I appreciate get, the, like, not only the way they tried to make her look less attractive physically, uh, I think they did a fairly good job of making her less attractive to the character of Craig Schwartz uh, in other ways. Where, I absolutely you know, agree. With the zoo that she has? I, yeah, and it's just like, and the, she's like petting a monkey when he yeah. comes home, and you know, he just met this Catherine Keener, who's yeah. just like, in his mind, just this Adonis of beauty. She's and, perfect. Yeah. Even though she's such a, such a terrible person. Oh yeah, she's the she's worst. She's the worst character in this movie. Like, yeah. she just toys with everyone and is so high on herself. Up until the end, she kind of has a little character transformation, which I yeah. think is yeah. probably the uh, one thing that I have against this movie mm -hmm. is um, her kind of turnaround when she has a baby. Really. Yeah, it's her. It's her big turnaround. I get how it comes out of that. Like mm -hmm. it's been nine months, right? Right. But we don't really see her lead up to that. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that I wanted more of, it was a little bit more character development with her. Mm -hmm. She sells it as the actor. Like, Catherine Keener, the actress, is like, she sells that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she's phenomenal in this movie. I think she's great in everything. Oh, she's, she's yeah, she's great. Um, but I think it's a, I think her part near the end becomes a little bit underwritten. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's fair. What do you and think? The, what do you think of the 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 ending? The kind of the R.L. Stein ending. Oh, the better. <laughs> oh, that is the 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 what a twist. Yeah, a twist. Like, well, it's not a twist. They tell you it's gonna happen. It's not a twist, but it's it's yeah. like I, I guess maybe I'm dating myself in um, here. But if you read Goosebumps books, that's the kind of ending that would happen. Oh, they're back. Goosebumps. You're not dating yourself. Oh, good. They're back. Good. Yeah. Oh, where can I read them? Um, I won't. Yeah, uh, I have to go into the kids section <laughs> of chapters, <laughs> dude. Can I order it online? Probably. Okay, great. <laughs> um, next week we're going to review Goosebumps, the series. No, we're not. Oh, it's my choice. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> next, next week. Um, <laughs> God damn. But anyway, so like you know, the idea of uh, Craig Schwartz getting trapped forever in this baby uh, vessel and never being able to control it and just w having to watch uh, the rest of his life and watch the woman of his dreams raise him. What do I think about that? Yeah. That's exactly what he deserved. Great. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Craig Schwartz is a terrible person. Yeah. Like... No, oh, he's awful. He's very... He's very awful. Um, I think... I, I, I disagree with you. I think he's the worst person in the movie. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because, like, Catherine Keener's character... Um, God, what is her name again? Maxine. Maxine. Um, has the turnaround, right? Mm -hmm. So she actually has an arc, right? And doesn't matter if it's underwritten. She sells it, mm -hmm. so it's good. Mm -hmm. Um... She has the arc. She becomes like she actually confesses her love for um, Lottie. Lottie, and goes to her. Mm -hmm. Right um, when Craig Schwartz comes out, he just tries immediately to jump back into the body of John Malkovich. Yeah, he tries immediately to do that, and he has no remorse or anything. Yeah, and and I agree. Like he's he's a terrible person, but I I guess. His his arc is for me a lot more like satisfying, even if like it ends badly for him. I think that's a satisfying ending. But mm -hmm. but I think that he is he's such a flawed uh, character that I like the fact that you kind of sympathize with him at the beginning when you see like you know he's this artist who's struggling. Yeah, that was then... the weirdest thing because he reveals himself to be this. He's not. He's not on the surface. This terrible person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is revealed to be. And then you know he has this this attraction to Maxine and does what is in his nature to like try and chase after it and uh, it doesn't work. And then he finds something that he thinks might be a loophole uh, in using John Malkovich, making her think it's Lottie. That weird quadrangle, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> and. Uh, and that's where he, you know, he actually gets some satisfaction, and so he goes with it. So while while I don't agree with his uh, methods um, or his uh, ultimate uh, decisions, um, I sympathize with him. Like I see where he, like I see where he basically he was he had nothing in his life, and then he finds something by being Mal being John Malkovich. That's the title of the movie. Uh, <laughs> And so he he tries to hold on to it, and that's you know I think it's really interesting when he talks about how he has figured out how to stay inside. And he's like you just have to like hold on to it and and like just be this like persistent asshole, and he does it, and then you know gets to do his art for millions, and you know using this other person's fame, and it's really interesting, really fascinating uh, concept. And because of that, I don't detest him. I just kind of detest the things he does, if that makes sense. It does. Whereas with Catherine Keener, uh, all I see her do is, like, she's, she's fine. She's, mm -hmm. she, her life is fine. She doesn't have any, like, issues in her life that we know of. I mean, who knows? But, uh, but she just toys with Craig. She knows he's attracted to her, and she just, like, fucks, fucks around with him. And the same thing with Lottie, too. Like, once Lottie reveals her love to her, and she's like, oh, yeah, me too, but only in Malcolm Ranch. And it's this weird... I don't know, it's it's all very strange, but the things that she does, and then, you know, finds out that Craig was in there, so she, like, turns it around on Lottie, and is like, oh, maybe I'll, I can control Craig, and Craig can control Malkovich. That's how I can do my thing. And, yeah, it's not until she gets pregnant and kind of has her very brief... Uh, Turn around that she becomes more. Alcoholics refer to it as a moment of clarity. 
do, do they? <laughs> so you want to tell me, Greg? So it's a Pulp Fiction line, man. <laughs> I don't know movies. Samuel L. Jackson says I don't it. know movies. Come Jesus on. Jesus Christ. Don't, what are we doing? Whatever. All right. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> that was my ramble about sympathizing with the characters. Okay. Okay. Great. Now what? I don't know if I want to really get into what it means to have a soul, because I don't have that much hard drive <laughs> space on my camera. Yes. So save that for the special features. Yeah. So just to say this movie doesn't answer that question. No. But it poses one. Yes. Also has a great Charlie Sheen cameo. It does. Yeah. There's no such thing as a hole into somebody's brain. Yes, there is. You see the world through John Malkovich's eyes? Yes. And then after about 15 minutes, and that's not me. I didn't say that. You're spit out into a ditch on the side of the New Jersey Turnpike. It's amazing. Where the hell are we? We're about to be just subconscious. Do you think that it's kind of weird that John Malkovich has a portal? I mean, do you think that it might have some sort of significance? What is going on? Huh? I discovered that portal. It's my head! Standout scenes. Alan, what's your standout <laughs> scene? Uh, uh, well, I... I think, and I avoided talking about this because I think it's the best place to talk about it, but the scene where Malkovich enters his own portal is absolutely my standout scene because it's hilarious and it's it's such a Kaufman uh, written scene yep. and I absolutely adore it. I think it's so funny and John Malkovich, I just, um, I just picture the actor John Malkovich doing all of these parts whatever week they shot this scene, you know, like Okay, now you're going to get into a lounge singer's dress, and you're going to sing the piano, and you're going to sing Malkovich. And it's just, it's so absurd and so ridiculous. And the, you know, the uh, the real, quote-unquote, Malkovich, who's, like, sitting there, and then he's, Malkovich! Like, he's, all he can say is Malkovich, and he shouts it, and it's, oh, it's so, he sells it so well, and I just, I adore it. And then, uh, you know, the subsequent getting released, and then yelling at him, uh, you know, it's my head, it's my head. Like, I think that's a really uh, uh, great scene as well. And so that whole kind of process of him discovering what they're doing, forcing his way into his own portal, yeah. uh, even the discussion beforehand where he's saying, you know, I want to do it. And Craig says, you know, oh, I think it'll pale in comparison to the real thing. Um, like, I think that's a really interesting uh, concept. And yeah, I, I, I just love that whole, that whole sequence. I have seen something that no man should ever see. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> it's great. Uh, really, I also, most people think it's a pleasant experience. I also really, really like um, the fact that it's revisited in adaptation. That's right. Yeah, at the very beginning of yeah. adaptation, it's Charlie Kaufman at, on set of being mm -hmm. John Malkovich. Yeah. That's the scene they're filming. It's yeah, so it. great. <laughs> um, my standout scene is literally the moment after that, okay. when John Malkovich is walking down the side of the road on the New Jersey Turnpike, and someone says, think fast, Malkovich. Hey, Malkovich, think fast. <laughs> Throws a can at him. Whips a beer can at him. And his scream. Ow! It's just like... Fuck! <laughs> it's so real because... <laughs> because it, it is. wasn't scripted. And it was just some extra being a dick. And <laughs> Spike actually, Jones loved yeah. it, so he kept it. And, and they had to pay that guy. Yeah. <laughs> they had to pay that guy so much more money. And they had to get him in and to ADR him, it. Yeah. And credit him in the movie. Oh, man, that just goes to show you throw things at celebrities. <laughs> You'll get in the movies. Yeah, absolutely. I adore that scene. Yeah. Okay. Because, A, I love the story behind it. Mm -hmm. And, B... I love the choice that Spike Jones made to leave it in. And see, I love John Malkovich's performance in it. Mm -hmm. He's still in character in the moment. Yeah. Because he gets hit. It's like, ah, oh, fuck. And you can just tell, like, and, and it's the same feeling that has carried over from the scene that's, from the scene before. Yeah. Right? It's now, just this, like, feeling of, of, like... Like, sheer frustration. Frustration and, and being, uh... Violation. Violated, yeah, yeah. that's the Yeah, he's completely violated, and it's... Um, he was probably not in character. Like, he, he's probably reacting out of character, right. but the reaction is... It's so good. ...is perfectly... Yeah. Like, you don't see that very often in 
big movies mm -hmm. and like A list movies. Yeah. And never, like, never mind. Uh, this situation could have turned into a lawsuit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but out of a movie filled with outstanding writing, wonderful performances, and great scenes, the one that wasn't planned is my favorite. <laughs> I really like the improv. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, what do you think of Dr. Lester? We didn't talk about him at all. Dr. Lester? Yeah. The old guy. Oh, the old guy. Don't, yeah, yeah. Dr. Lester. I, he annoys me. I love I loved Dr. Lester. Uh, he's, he's like he's, weird non sequitur talks to he, Craig at the beginning. It's yeah, he's, so funny. he's really funny and... Um, I like the I like Kaufman's character of the of the secretary who can't hear anything. <laughs> Sorry, not not can't hear anything. Misunderstands yeah. everything. Yeah. And he, he thinks he has a speech impediment because of her. Because of her. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Really funny. Yeah. Anyway. The fact that he's like a thousand years old. Yeah. Is funny. Yeah. John Cusack, Cameron Diaz, Catherine Keener. And John Malkovich. Malkovich! Malkovich! Be John Malkovich. Hey, Malkovich, be fast! Um, yeah, I mean, one of my favorite movies uh, of all time. Uh, not only because it's a Charlie Kaufman film and pretty much all of them are up there. But, uh, yeah, really funny, really interesting concept, really original idea. Uh, John Malkovich just nailing it, and uh, just the he's such a good sport in this movie. Yeah, it's 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 so weird to think about like how they approached him to do this, and yeah, uh, I love it. But uh, and yeah, and just in general, just a lot of the concepts that they reveal um, throughout the movie is are really fascinating, really interesting. You, you know, like I said at the beginning, the idea of identity, uh, sexual identity, um, the uh, work of an artist, celebrity. All that stuff is just really cool. They don't like really delve into it a lot, but it's all there on the surface and all there just like for you to think about. Yeah. Rather than them ever being like, I wonder what it's like, like what what is the self? You know, it's, like it's presented to you to think about, but it's presented to you because it's for the story. Exactly. Nothing is presented. Nothing doesn't serve the story. Precisely. In this movie, yeah. and that is very good writing. Yeah. So yeah, great movie. Watch it if you haven't. Yeah. It's been 25 I, years, apparently. They're in some sort of time warp or something. Just I'm an idiot. don't listen to math. Um, I say definitely see it. Definitely buy it if you can. It's, it's criterion. Maybe. It's yeah, it's definitely worth it's worth your money. Like there's actually a, a in the criterion booklet there's an interview with Spike Jones. Uh, oh, I can't remember who the guy who's interviewing him, but it's so funny. It's <laughs> it starts out like you you think it's a normal interview to start with, and then eventually it's like Spike Jones silence, and then the interviewer keeps going, and then Spike Jones, I don't think I can take any more of this, and then the interviewer keeps going, and <laughs> Spike Jones, uh, please stop. <laughs> and it's literally him just like uh, like one of the things he says is. Uh, uh, you, you seem to resist uh, any hitting your head on low ceiling jokes throughout the film, but then at, at an hour 37, you succumb. Why is that? Pressure from the studio? <laughs> it's just like, it's so funny. Uh, you'll have to read it after this, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Worth the Criterion Edition just for that little interview. That's funny. Okay. I, uh... 10 out of 10. That's why I give it. Ten out, oh, Alan's first 10 out of 10. That's right. Oh, that's great. Pretty much any coffee movie will do that, except for a couple. Which one? Guess which ones? Oh. Is it the Human Nature? Yeah, that's the one. Um, Confessions probably wouldn't be a ten out of ten for me. What would it be? Uh, nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty high rating for that movie. Yeah, I really like it. That's, I agree. I would really give it a nine out of ten as well. Yeah. I think it drags around the middle, but that's about it. Fair enough. Um, but so apparently this was also a capsule review of Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. <laughs> <Five>. uh, <laughs> Adaptation, Eternal Sunshine, Synecdoche, all ten out of ten for me. Yeah. I still I don't have a rating for Synecdoche. Nobody does. I can't say anything about it to yet. To be fair, like mine's a ten question mark. Out yeah. Of 10. Yeah. Because I knit, I will never fully understand that movie, and that's why I love it. Mine is pie out of unknown. <laughs> the score is oogie to boogie. <laughs> Q to fifteen. <laughs> Calvin Ball. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All um, right. So what are we doing next week, Greg? That's a very good question. Uh oh. Um. 
next week I have a special project for you uh, once no. again. Um, I like changing things up. Yeah, it's I, fun. It's fun. It's neat. Uh, uh, next week is going to be a comparison, uh -oh. uh, comparison review, and we are going to be comparing and contrasting RoboCop Ugh. and the RoboCop remake. Somehow I knew <laughs> this is what it was going to be. Not necessarily a comparison, but the new RoboCop. I just I had a feeling. What you're gonna pick because I don't want to see it. What did you think I was gonna pick the Lego movie? No. Fuck no. I thought maybe something else. Did something completely out of left field. Like Winter's Tale? No. <laughs> like not even necessarily a new movie. No, I know, but. The Notebook. No, it's going to be Robocop, the versus... Paul Verhoeven movie, versus Robocop. versus Robocop. The new one. Cage Match. Great. I shall take the position that RoboCop is better, and you shall take the position that RoboCop is better. <laughs> See you next time. Thank you.